Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing really good. So I have a little bit of a confession to make. This iPad came to me for repair last week and without placing full blame on myself, this thing was a prior repair attempt. It had already had TriStar removed. It had some components knocked around and missing. The dock flex had already been removed and whenever it was shipped here, it was shipped in a container where the logic board was not held really firm so it was allowed to slide around in the box which allowed the dock flex to be torn off of the board so there was like a bunch of missing pads there. Honestly, I really should have just said you're better off to replace this thing because I mean this is only an iPad Air 2 like you can buy these you can buy the whole iPad functioning for 100 bucks. So, what's going on here is that I replaced the dock flex, I fixed what was messed up around the TriStar IC and verified this this thing that this thing was charging and just blasted it right back out the door. Well, Lo and behold, they get the iPad back, it's a repair shop, they get the iPad back and it's got the classic fault where it only charges whenever it's powered off and it also automatically turns itself on. So with a dead battery, what that means is that you can't wait for it to boot and then turn it off and then let it charge because as soon as you do that, this iPad turns itself right back on and when it comes up, it won't charge, the battery's dead, it shuts off because the battery's dead and then it charges just enough and turns back on and it shuts off and turns back. It just, it's, it's a mess. Now, this is a repair that I would have in the past when this device was worth working on, I would have turned this away because I was not comfortable back then working with underfilled chips and also the larger ball grid array ICs. So when he told me what this was doing, I didn't even really think twice about it. I just said, yeah, send it back and we'll get it fixed because I mean, now we're doing CPU replacements and, and, and well, not replacements, but reballs and for full board swaps and things. So I'm gonna see if I can fix this today. That's our symptoms. It only charges when it's powered off and it won't actually stay off. So you can't charge it that way either. All right, so here we are having a look at this board. As you can see, it has already had the dock flex replaced and it has also had the TriStar area reworked. Now, full disclosure, I am not the one that cut the shield out around that. I really only cut the brackets on these whenever I absolutely have to, and that is definitely not one where I would have to cut it. The chip that we are concerned about is this one right here that's under the, uh, the little thermal transfer heatsink thing that is normally to transfer the heat to this top shield. However, I've actually never seen the top shield to this board, and I'm worried the repair shop is going to send it back out without it. The rest of the board looks pretty okay. Um, and again, this thing was received, was sent to me. It was missing this IC right here, the little TriStar IC, and the dock flex was actually, it was torn. It, it had been replaced before, and I think it would have probably worked, but during shipping, it got literally torn off the board this way, like a Band-Aid. So we're gonna try not to disturb that. So here we are looking at the main PMIC under the microscope. I'm gonna go ahead and begin warming this up just a smidge in here because I need everything to be a little bit softer. Starting with this crazy heat sink on top of here. So as I warm it up, I'm just gonna get the corner of my blade under it. Should come off there pretty easy. You know, that blade's a little bit too big. All right, so with this warmed up, this little heat sink thing ought to just come right up off of here. And I'd like for the adhesive to stay on it. I plan to reuse it. Ow, it's hot. Oh, good. We actually got pin one marked on this chip that seemingly has no marks. So I'm going to take my blade and I like to, well, I don't like to, but I do this for almost every IC that I pull. I just put a little bit of a mark on the board so I'm not stuck going back to a schematic or something to remember exactly where pin one is. So there's our pin one. We're going to be lining this dot up with that. Hopefully the new chip actually has a dot on it. Now then, I'm going to continue warming this up. I'm going to set my hot air on 250 degrees C with an airflow of 65 and just continue warming this up. It doesn't look like it has much underfill. Like most of the sides of it are, are clear. We got some here over here on the left side. Boy, I do I do really appreciate the glue that Apple uses on the new boards. Uh, this older glue is just not fun. Well, I really hope this solves it. 
I've actually never fixed one of these before. Like back when this iPad was, you know, much more worth working on, whenever I would run into this issue and, you know, a lot of techs that would run into this issue, we'd wind up telling the customer that it's really just, you know, it's going to be a flimsy repair if it's, if it's successful and whatnot. And it's just not entirely true these days. This is completely replaceable. I got to take a break to receive text messages here. <clears throat> All right, so we're just going to continue warming this up. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm trying to decide what my plan of attack here is. Because to get this off the board, we can't just go yanking on it. Um, if we start yanking on it, I'm going to wind up lifting a whole bunch of pads. And... Boy, that tool's pretty dirty. I might actually pull a couple of caps over here so that I can get a better angle at it. Ooh, two other things that I forgot to mention. Oh my goodness. I got just a little bit ahead of myself there. Since the dock flex has been replaced, this has been replaced using leaded solder, which means it's going to melt much easier than the chip I'm getting ready to remove. And I'm worried that the whole entire board could get hot enough, you know, to float that loose. So I'm adding some thermal mass down here. And then also we have a pretty big BGA IC up here that I don't want to accidentally float it. So I'm just going to kind of throw a uh, a shield over that. So now that I've put on just a little bit of protection, I'm going to continue to warm this up. And man, I just, everywhere I see that we've got glue stuck between stuff, I get worried. Well, I don't like seeing my razor blades bent a little bit. I'll put a new blade on here when I'm ready. I get worried about balls popping out. So it's, uh, not near as big of an issue as it used to be. And that just comes from more, more better control of hot air. All right. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in probably here. Oh, man, I don't know. I'm going to go from the right side over here just because I'm right-handed and see if I can get this to pop up off here. If I wind up dislodging a bunch of capacitors, that's going to be fine. I'll put them back on. Ooh, it's a little hotter than I thought. You see that flux bubbling? That's my, that's my thermometer. All right, so let's get some flux all the way around this thing, which on the new models really helps to break that loose from the glue and leave all the glue behind. Yeah, on this case, I'd really rather bring all the glue up with the chip, though. So let's just see how this goes. And again, I'm planning on having to push a couple of these capacitors aside, probably right here in the center is where I'm going to go. Uh, maybe I should go from the bottom. Or how about the bottom left corner? Hey, that's looking better. All right, so I've planned my attack. I'm going to come in down here at the bottom left corner, right there, and see if I can get this thing to... Man, I don't like the angle. What else can we get? Maybe from the bottom? Like I said, I've never done this one before. Trying to get it as perfect. There we go. You see what I'm after? I'm trying to get the blade to go under like that and not like down. You know, the more shallow we can get this, the better. So that's where we're going to go. Continue to heat this up. I'd like to see just a smidgen more flux right there. I'm going to bump the hot air up to 430 degrees C with an airflow of 40. And start heating the total holy snot out of this thing. Now, we can use nearby components, like right down here, we've got this little oscillator. We can watch for that to begin to melt. Now, this board, this thing is really big, has a lot of thermal mass. It's really difficult to try to heat this thing evenly. So, I'm going to do my best. Now, when we see that flux start to bubble, we're getting a little bit warmer. We're getting closer. I hear things sizzling and popping. That's probably not good. Now, right now, I'm watching this little oscillator here. See there? Oh, see how it just started to melt? Now, once I see that, I know I'm getting really close. I can go ahead and start to slip my blade in. I'm going to go in right there. Begin to twist a little. Back off. And a little farther. There we go. Nice, clean lift. Now, when removing these underfilled ICs, I really, really 
like to see the flat spots on the top of all these? The flat spots on the top of all these balls means that this was removed with the absolute lowest heat possible. So, uh, and you'll see on the right side here, we've got some over here that had started to melt, which it's kind of weird for that. I guess my hot air was over, you know, overshooting and hitting that side. Um, but that's really good to see. That means nothing else was disturbed. And now we need to clean up the area, right? So for that, I'm going to be using a soldering iron. I'll lower my temperature of my hot air since I'm going to be using a soldering iron. All right, we want to keep the board warm. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to this. And I'm going to use some leaded solder to begin reducing the melting temperature of this garbage that's on the board. I am really curious to see if this is going to fix it. I hope it does. Now not only am I diluting the solder, but I'm also using this little smashed up hook on the end of this tip to drag some of the old stuff, you know, to drag some of the glue off the board. Okay, now we don't want to be too aggressive with the board because I, you know, I don't, I keep saying we, but I really mean me. I don't want to be scraping the, uh, the coating off of the top of the board to where I wind up with like exposed traces and ground plane and whatnot. This is not the right tip to be using for this, but it'll be fine. All right, now I've got that pretty well diluted. I'm going to switch over and use some wick. Now the wick is going to help me to clean the glue and the solder off. So we'll just get that in there right like that. I'll focus more on the solder here in a minute. Right now I'm going for the glue. Now I would really prefer to be doing this with low melt uh, because it makes things quite a bit easier. I had a little bit too much solder on my tip that time. I like to start with a tiny bit of solder because it helps to get a good, a good thermal bond with the iron, but that was a little too much. Yeah, there's still quite a bit of glue there. It might be hard to see with that camera quality, but we are cleaning away glue and diluting the solder at the same time. This part can be really time consuming. Now here in just a minute, I'm going to switch over to a blade and start cleaning the rest of this off with a blade. I'm just trying to be absolutely sure I've got most all of the solder changed over to something that melts lower than lead free. Yeah, in my early days of micro soldering, I would have never tackled something like this. This just would have been a complete nightmare. One of the biggest things to remember is to just remain calm. Like, this stuff really does work after it's all cleaned up and put back on. Um, I'm doing this with CPUs uh, quite literally several times a week now, if not more. And just got to clean it up, make it pretty, make sure there's no high spots um, along the edges of here. There's all these spots where um, you can see that the glue is raised up. Like this won't work. Like all this, this has to come off. 
All right, so now I'm getting out of my getting out my weapon of choice, which is the number 16 Exacto blade. There are a lot of special tools and like you know the little hockey stick thing that I've always talked about, but my weapon of choice are Exacto blades most of the time. Um, aside from the tools that are used that I use for lifting these chips, um, here is a number 16 Exacto blade. This is what I'm going to use to finalize this cleanup for the most part. This blade is capable of taking off the excess solder, the glue, everything all at the same time. So I'm warming this board right back up. Get it in place. And now see these pads start to melt? I think you should be able to see that. That's right about where I want to hold the temperature of this board. And as I do that, I can slip this blade right in on the side. Boy, this is actually much easier with CPUs because they're larger. Don't want to go too deep. You can see where I just scratched the board. You can slip this blade in and it'll take the excess solder off, glue off. And you can just shave it all right on off there. Leave yourself with nice clean spots most favorite tool in the world for cleaning up nasty underfill. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. The blade is quite a bit too big for this though, so uh, maybe I should use a smaller one for smaller chips like this one. Okay, I'm just going to have to turn it quite a bit. Let's go ahead and rotate it. There we are. Okay, here we go. Let's shave this part off. Try not to get too hot, trying to keep it from being too cold, because I am taking off excess solder and the glue all at the same time. Oh yeah, baby. Now one of the only annoying things that I've found using these blades is that the solder's like it's it adheres to them really well. Like you solder literally directly to the blade. But as soon as you warm it back up on the next job, it comes right loose again, like it doesn't stay there. All right, so that's got that side pretty well good to go. Okay. Rotate. Continue scraping this off. Just have to be really mindful of the angle and how hard you push, because this blade will literally just scrape the whole top of that board off, like everything, all at the same time. This is down in a crevice. The, the handle of my tool actually keeps hitting the components around it, so it's, it's causing me to have trouble getting right here into the center. So if I reposition a little bit, I should be able to swipe up through the center here. All right, let's rotate again. Should be about ready to switch tools again. Yeah, you can see how much solder I've actually got stuck to the, the blade. But as I, as I warm this up, that solder will melt and just becomes a blade again. Now, I'm not going to nitpick this one too bad because 
it's really easy to put a nasty scrape or something in the board and then you're just like, oh man, why did I nitpick? All right, get some nice big old chunks of this off of here. It's all right to have some glue left behind. You just don't want it holding the chip up, which will happen. It'll keep that chip from going down on there. And I know I'm nuts. I'm sitting here also intentionally using it to remove the solder too, but it's okay. Everything's going to be just fine. just about good to go for putting a new chip on it. Whoop, watch that angle, bruh. Get that angle a little bit too sharp and it will shave off the ground plane. That's nice and pretty. Yeah, I really, really should have tested this better before I let it out the door. I feel terrible for this shop. Um, I just, I do. I, sh I should not have let this go out the door without doing more thorough testing. But to be 100% honest, I didn't have an iPad Air 2 battery. I had a battery that had the same exact pin pattern on the bottom. The polarity was right. Um, I plugged it in. I seen proper charging current. I seen boot. Knowing that all my soldering work was good, TriStar DocFlex, I disconnected it and sent it out the door. Like, I'm just, I've apologized to these guys a couple of times. Like, th this is my fault. I should have known better. I really should have. But, to keep from being too hard on myself, this thing arrived mutilated. So, there's that. Which doesn't directly affect the repair, but it affects your mind. Like, you know they've already replaced TriStar on the DocFlex, and you think that that's the pro- Like, I just fixed what they messed up. I, I took what they were trying to do, and finished it and silly me this thing probably never had a problem with the dock flex and tristar it was probably this the whole time like all right anyways moving right along here we're not going to dwell in the past right all right a little more glue here okay here's where i'm getting into a point where i think i'm probably nitpicking because unless this glue in the corners is tall enough to keep that chip from sitting flat it really does not matter Oh, I got a pretty big chunk down here at the bottom, though. Let's get rid of that. Nope. Not without turning it. Turn the board as many times as you need, is what I keep telling myself, because if you don't, and you try to just hold that at a weird angle to make, thing, make, make it so you don't have to turn the board, well, then life can be miserable. Now, you can see I almost shaved through that little trace right there. We're not going to worry about that now, are we? Okay, that's good enough for me. Now I'm gonna grab an alcohol Q-tip here and start cleaning this up like that. Make sure this thing is nice and pretty and then we're gonna drop a brand spanking new IC on it. It's a little bit warm there, see it boiling the alcohol? Okay, here we go. Yeah, this underfill really isn't all that hard to deal with. And what Apple is using on the newer chips, it is significantly easier to deal with. Okay, I will have to hit this with the blade once more. I see a couple of pieces over here on this side. Okie dokie, it's actually looking pretty good. Now, the pads that you see missing here, those are no stuff pads, or NC pads is what I should say. They don't actually have anything hooked to them. You can see that it's just blank underneath. Those pads were just glued on. And on the board view, they'll be labeled as NC, where they're not connected. They're just like there in case they were needed. I have rarely ever had to worry about those pads. And I say rarely because once in a while, those board views are wrong. Yeah, we can't nitpick too much here. I don't want to pop vital pads off. I just want to make sure it's squeaky, spotless, clean. <laughs> but I don't want to nitpick. And then now I'm actually going to go after these two high solder balls here. These, there's a couple of pads here that... 
have solder on them that needs to go. And rather than getting out wick, again, I'm just going to take the tool that's already in my hand and shave those off. Oof, except I can't really do that because the blade's too big. Okay, so now we're going to switch to solder wick and some solder with some flux and just hit this once more. I want to make sure it's nice and flat. I don't want some of these to be flat and other ones to be bubbled up. And I'm looking at what's being recorded right now. You can't really see what I'm seeing. There's the slightest little hump on these shiny pads in the middle and I'm going to hit these with some wick and just kind of fix it. And then we'll clean it up once more with the iron, or I mean with the alcohol and life will be good. Hopefully. Hope it works, otherwise this is all for nothing. I wonder what Paul Daniels is doing today. All right, so that has me feeling all warm and fuzzy, and I'm pretty certain that this is going to be okay. So clean this up one more shot here. Boy, it would actually be quite a bit uh, cheaper just to go ahead and order up a board for this thing, or even a replacement iPad, honestly. Oof. The footprint on this chip is pretty big. Like, it hangs over way over, so I also got to be mindful way out here. This will be good. See a couple of spots here and there, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. This thing's going to, this chip is capable of sitting on there reasonably flat. There's a tiny bit of a spot here and a tiny bit of a spot here where those pads aren't just perfect, but let's just stop right there before I wind up gouging something on here. And uh, let's see what we can do about a brand spanking new IC, shall we? Uh, I actually bought these chips from Mobile Centrix. They have two in stock for the iPad Air 2 Wi-Fi version. One of them says it's for a Mini 4 Air 2 that actually has no writing on it, like the chip I'm holding. And the other one says it's for just an Air 2, um, and that's the Wi-Fi version. But it does have writing on it, so I'm going to go with the one that looks the same. It doesn't have any writing on it. See what we got. I haven't looked at the chip yet. All right, so let's have, let's have a look at the brand new chip here. Hopefully it has pin 1 marked. It does. I'm going to say that's the same chip. I'm pretty sure that's the same chip that I just took off of there. And looking at the way it looks, I'm also pretty sure... Oh, look at that. That's just been pulled. Ooh. It's very much obviously a refurb or a pull. Like, that's been pulled from another iPad. You can see it still has glue all around the edges. And they didn't reball it, which... Sort of makes me happy because I was going to reball it anyway. They, uh, bald chips that you buy, they come with lead-free solder. And, you know, that's okay, but the melting point is so high that you wind up jeopardizing other things to do it. So let's get some brand new balls on here, shall we? I'm going to throw me down a napkin and move this thing over to reballing station B here. Then I'm going to find a stencil that'll fit. Oh, that stencil is looking pretty bad. This, this stencil must have been used... by somebody that wasn't me or whenever I was learning, right? Okay, we just want to make sure we're not missing a whole row. There we go. 
Now, for a lot of larger BGA reballing, like CPUs and stuff, I like to use this mechanic, low melt stuff that's used for putting like uh, the iPhone 10 boards back together, iPhone 11, probably the same stuff on the iPhone 12 mini. But because this is an iPad, and it really, really needs to be able to survive being smacked around and also being slightly bent, I'm going to be using some nice leaded solder on this. And the solder paste that you buy is usually way, way, way too wet. So to fix that problem, I'm going to be using a napkin. And we're just going to get down in here and get us a big old glob of this stuff. I'm going to get a little more than what I need because I've got more that I have to do today. There we go. And we're just going to smear that into a napkin like that. I'm going to fold it over and begin squeezing and pressing on it. And we really just want to squeeze and press this as much as humanly possible. And if I had been a little bit more planned ahead, I normally like for planning CPU jobs, I do this a little bit earlier in the morning and I'll lay it sort of open on top of my soldering station or on top of something else that stays a little bit warm and just let the air get to it because you really want this stuff to dry out. Not like way out, but there's a certain consistency that you're looking for so that it doesn't make your life miserable. And should be almost there now. Well, not almost there, but it's better than it was. We're just drying this up a little bit. Fold it, squeeze it, fold it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. All right, so I've got a matching stencil. I've got some paste, somewhat ready. Now I'm going to fix whatever it is that they have done to this chip because I just, well, I really don't trust whatever that garbage is that's on there. So I'll add a little bit of flux to this. And I'm going to go ahead and dilute this with some leaded solder. Just got a blob on my micro pencil. And right now I'm waiting for the chip to heat up. Getting better, 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 better. Here we go. That's good enough for me. We could really nitpick at that and just clean and clean and clean and clean and clean. I mean, there's probably a little bit left over from whatever was on there before still, but I just, I feel a whole lot better about this now. Oops. Don't push on the Q-tip. I want to let the alcohol do the work here, fellers. Now also having a little bit of humps going on here like I do will help hold your stencil in place. Love it. Okay, I'm going to move this down out of the alcohol puddle onto a dry spot. There we go. Oh, there we went. Okay, so we're going to do that right there. Right? I hate it when I miss a row. Like, it's awful. I have to redo the whole thing. All right, so I've got that thing sitting in there nice and pretty. I'm going to get us a blob of solder paste here. Okay, here we go. We're going to work this paste in here. It's a little too wet, but we're going to be okay. We're just going to leave it. Nice and pretty. Oh boy. My son was using my stencil holding tweezers and they are <laughs> not good. All right, but we're gonna use them anyway because that doesn't matter how clean those are. It just is really ugly. I've got my hot air set on 340 degrees C with an airflow of 40. And I'm going to try to warm a lot of this stencil up and get this thing to pop up flat. 
so that we don't have any warping whenever I, I just felt it go whenever we go to reball this chip. So we are almost there. Okay, here we go. Almost there. Okay, here we go. It's just marvelous. Yippee. Now, I don't have a real clear bearing on where the edge of the chip is here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, do what I normally do. And that is add flux and float it once more. That's to make sure that all of the balls have adhered to the pads. So let's do this once more. Everything's still pretty hot. And I'm gonna heat it right on back up and melt it once more. Uh, and that was plenty of flux. That amount of flux will cover this whole chip and be enough to put it on the board. Okay, that's looking good. We're gonna let it cool and then pop it out of that stencil. It's cool. Some of the balls were a little too big, but we're gonna leave it. You can shave those off with a razor blade carefully, as long as the blade's really sharp and you do it with forward motion so it slices. All right, now, I've got a lot of balls laying around here and that's because of using the wrong stencil. I'm just gonna make sure that none of them are on the surface. Oof, there's actually quite a few balls here. Okay, almost there. Yeah, the wrong size stencil is kind of annoying because you wind up with stuff like this. I actually have a mosquito that's biting my leg right now. And it's lucky I'm busy. All right. So now that I got this cleaned off, we are, whoop, I missed one. Down here, get rid of that crap. All right, so now that I got this cleaned off, we are free to float it one more time and make this much better. Okay, so here we go. One more float to make every make sure everything is adhered and symmetrical. That was a little too fast, but we are good to go. And there you have it. We have beautiful symmetrical balls. And this thing is ready to put on the board, except for the hairs that are on here. Get rid of a couple of little fuzzy things here and there. Ah, yes. All right, so back over to our board. All right, to get this thing sat back down on the board, or set it on the board in the first place, I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of flux. Remember, we've got quite a bit of flux on the chip itself, and then we'll smear that around our finger. Looking pretty good. Wipe the rest of it on my pants. Now we're gonna line up pin one. So that is gonna sit Just like that. Now the underfill glue is actually kind of handy for spotting, you know, which way to line things up. Boy, I've left a lot more fuzz on this than what I would normally leave. The board is still a little warm, but it's cooled off a lot, so I'm gonna have to spend some time warming this board up. So what I'm doing right here is just making sure, you know, unlike Samsung devices that normally give you little markers, uh, these devices have literally nothing other than the scratches you put on the board yourself and the edges of the glue. And that's what I'm going by to try to decide when this chip is actually lined up. I think it's actually pretty good there. 
they're not very forgiving. The larger chips are not that forgiving as far as how far out they can be. Now to put this back on, I'm gonna switch back over to the big nozzle because <clears throat> I need to use a lower airflow. I don't wanna blow that around. Um, you know, wider heat, lower airflow. And I'm gonna try to heat it up to a point where the flux starts to tack. So I'm gonna go with an airflow of 10, a temperature of 360. Let's do that and start warming this thing up. And right now I'm just trying to warm the whole entire board up under this. It's too close to the bottom. I need to raise that chip up a smidgen. So we're going to go up a little bit. Well, maybe it shifted on me. Okay, let's start right there. I'm gonna raise my airflow to probably 15 or 20. I see some flux bubbling at the bottom of my view here. Backing away to let it spread out the heat, not the flux. Okay, moving back in. We're almost there. I'm going to hit the button that gives me 340 with an airflow of 40. And watch for this chip to drop. Ooh, I was a little out. Did you see it move over? There we go. It is on the board. Almost nice and pretty. It's pretty funky, but as long as this works, you know, I'll worry about cleaning it up afterwards. Actually, I clean it up afterwards even if it don't work like a jackass. All right, here we go. Board can cool off and I am ready to test run this thing. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is hook power to the battery terminals and make sure we don't have any like instant shorts or anything. That's the main thing. Actually, one of the main things. And then also this board, it was turning itself on. Uh, the moment you hook up power to the battery terminals, it would power on. It would boot, decide the battery was too dead, it would shut off. And with it off, it would charge, boot, decide the battery was too dead, and then shut off. Okie dokie, I have got this IC replaced. I haven't spent much time at all cleaning up the board because I really want to know if it works by now. So to test this thing, I'm going to hook me on a ground clamp here and then we're just going to hook right straight up to the battery terminal and see what we get for a load to see if there's any, you know, see if there's anything weird going on. I don't remember exactly which of the battery terminals here is uh, positive and which one is negative. So I'm just going to check that with the multimeter here real quick. So black probe on ground, red probe here, that's going to be positive, red probe here, that's going to be negative. So we don't care about the negative. We're only gonna worry about the positive, which is toward the top side of the board. So I will take my power supply with it set on four volts. I'm only gonna go at a quarter amp for now, just in case something is going to light on fire. And I'm gonna hook my ground right here to the dock flex. That'll be fine. And then I'm gonna to just touch the positive lead right there. And here we go. Let's see if we get any strange loads. It really, helps a lot if you turn the power supply on. So let's try that once more. I get nothing. That's actually a good sign. Uh, just to make sure the ground is good, I'm going to touch right here. Oh, it's definitely good. We get a quarter ramp when we short it straight to ground. So that is significantly better. This thing was turning itself on. So I'm going to go for a full-fledged test. I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in a housing where I've got a battery and uh, see what happens. Okay, so I've got this thing cleaned up and reassembled into the housing. We are at 8% battery power, and this thing is drawing normal charging current for the charger that I have it hooked to. And let's see, the power button is working normal as it should. We get a slide to power off, and after I power it off, it should stay off. 
Uh, before I did this repair, as I said, like if you ever, if you made it this far and you did a slide to power off, as soon as it turned off, it would turn right back on. And that is even without the charger connected. Uh, if you just took the DC power supply and hooked the board only on the table, hooked the power up to the battery terminals, this board would instantly begin booting. All right, so here we are. I took a break from this and I spent some time and I worked on another device and I'm coming back to this to check and see and we are at 21% battery power, which is excellent. And that is really good news for this iPad because it would not charge at all. Once it booted, it was drawing zero charging current and it would shut off and then turn itself back on, come up and boot and shut off. And that's, that, that's what it did. So, gosh, heck yeah, that makes me happy. This is a repair that in the past I had turned away so many times. They asked how much to fix an iPad that only charges when it's powered off and it's like... Oof, we can hope it's the battery data lines, which it hardly ever was. Well, if it was after a screen replacement, it was. But in this case, the fault was actually caused by the main power management IC on the board, which is on the tip of my finger now, and uh, that is completely fixed. So that is going to be the end of this video. I really cannot thank you all enough for watching. I appreciate so greatly all the comments and the thumbs up, and also I appreciate it if you subscribe. So um, that's it for now, everybody. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.